This is part two of our uh, video discussion of Axiom's new de-embedding capability in the version 2009 release. And what we're looking at here is not just de-embedding, but de-embedding of coupled lines. So for our baseline structure, we're going to look at a coupled line structure here where we've set up the ports in such a way that we're using the uh, grounding capability and the reference plane capability of de-embedding inherent in this simulation. Now what I've done is I've uh, taken this example out of the uh, AWR example so you're perfectly free to go and look at this uh, at when you load, download version 2009 and play with this as well. Um, but what we're going to do is we're going to compare this basic structure to EM site and as I mentioned in the earlier uh, video on de-embedding the reason why we're going to do this is because EM site provides us the ability to um, in a very controlled way, reduce our error and get an understanding of our error so we can remove that as a variable in the data that we're looking at. So here with the coupled line de-embedding in Axiom that's available in the version 2009 release, you can see that our coupled line measurement is uh, agreeing very well with, with Axiom. We can also, I'm sorry, with EM site, we can also um, look at a through measurement and see that <clears throat> the agreement is, is pretty good in terms of um, uh, the, uh, the S21 measurement or the through measurement going through this structure. Um, but this is just a very simple example where we have the two coupled lines in a very simple system. Let's look and see what happens as we look at some more complex situations um, which I've prepared here. Um, one of the things that we can do is we can look at what happens if we uh, have an edge difference. Now what I mean by that is that we've uh, started or we've placed the port in a different location for each one of the lines. So here port 1 is a little bit earlier to the or to the left of where it is for port 3, but you'll notice that the reference plane is identical. So in this case, if we hit the simulate button, I've already run the results, you can see that it's it's nearly identical to what the um, de-embedding was with Axiom. So there's very little uh, error introduced uh, from that. Now if we go ahead and look at another situation, so in, in other words the coupled lines are being um, taken into account um, regardless of where the uh, port is placed, but it's more important, more importantly with that the reference planes are in the same location, that the lengths of the line that are being uh, analyzed um, apart from the reference plane and apart from where the port is are identical. So in this case you would get the same answer because at the end of the day you are in fact looking at the same length of line. Okay, another situation that may be uh, of interest or of concern is what happens if I have uh, a multi-layer structure. Um, in this case I have two lines, again the de-embedding planes the, sorry, the reference planes and the ports are placed identically, um, both in terms of their location and in terms of how they're being grounded. But I have one line offset slightly by another on a layer with a very thin dielectric. So at low frequencies, we expect these lines to behave identically. But as the frequency goes up, and this the effect of this thin dielectric difference between the two layers um, comes into effect, we would like to see that there's, there is in fact a difference. So if we go and look at our through measurement and we re-simulate that, you can in fact see that at low frequencies we're going to get the same through measurement, but then as the frequency goes up it departs a little bit. And this is also reflected um, slightly in the coupled line uh, case, but not as much because there we're um, looking more at the, uh, at the coupled line structure and we have an immunity um, in some sense to these layers, uh, which is one of the reasons why people will use uh, coupled line structures. Um, we have a couple other cases here that we can look at. We can rotate the lines um, and see what happens. So in this case, the lines are on an angle, but again, the lengths of line that we're talking about are um, identical in both cases, and the de-embedding plane, sorry, the reference planes are um, parallel, if you will, um, even though in this rotated uh, in this rotated reference system, rotated coordinate system. In this case, if we look at the Results again, they're identical to the initial case in Axiom, uh, which gives us great comfort that the coupled line de-embedding is in fact working exactly the way we would like. Now finally, we have a counterexample, if you will, here with the Axiom underscore 80 structure that's been set up. And in this case, what we're doing is we're not using any of the de-embedding. So this is the way Axiom would have done it in uh, version 8. And we can look at the effect of that on our through and coupled line structure. And you can see that at low frequencies where we would expect there to be minimal or, or, or no apparent effect, we do get a fairly good agreement. But as frequency goes up for both the through and the coupled line case, we get significant departure from the behavior that we would expect. And really this is because effectively without the de-embedding turned on, those reference planes are immaterial and the point of reference is the location of the port rather than where the extension has been placed. So effectively the lines are longer 
and this is the behavior that you'd get. Now the coupled line de-embedding and the uh, simple de-embedding that I showed in the previous video, uh, the differential ports is another AWR TV video you can look at. There's um, a host of information available on AWR TV. There's addi additional information available on the AWR website. Uh, the documentation as well for version 2009 reflects the new de-embedding capability. Uh, and if you still have more questions, I encourage you to contact your AWR sales professional.